seeing Dolph Ziggler go out there, get that massive response, get the crowd on his side, who had routinely hated him for quite a few years prior. Well, every fan, every fan who's a fan really does mark out and remembers, oh, that guy was one of the Spirit Squad guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody remembers him, and you're all like, I remember when they were trying to push Kenny. I'm Kenny lu- was a washout. I'm lucky. I don't remember it. Wasn't Good. watching wrestling at the time. Good. You know what? It was, uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a Triple H guy. I've been a yeah. Triple H guy forever. Mm. And um, uh, anyone who listens to our show knows I have a bromance mm-hmm. with Triple H. He has no idea about it, <laughs> but he- I have a... I have a bromance with him, and I was a fan. I'm talking. I was a fan from Terror Rising. Oh wow! Up into even through the curtsying, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, through Blue Blood, oh, wow. through all that. I was a fan. Mm-hmm. And then when he switched, and he kind of became Triple H DX, Came it was just home. like, well, I had a whole bunch of friends, much like you, be be jobbing me, marking out, being like, "What are you doing? What are you liking this guy?" I'm like, "Wait for it," because in 15 years, you're all going to be kissing my ass. Mm. And sure enough, in 15 years, he literally. Well, not in 15 years, but in about six years from that point, he won his first world title, came out, switched heel, became Dark Triple H character, which I loved even more, mm-hmm. turned his back on DX, the whole Helmsley McMahon regime, all of it, I loved it. And this was a guy who I, who I consistently, most people forget, you think about The Rock reinventing, you think about Mick Foley reinventing, you think about Ric Flair reinventing, Sting reinventing. Yes. But you look at the career of Triple H, and this is a guy that successfully reinvented after taking a pretty shit character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And reinventing it yep. into a guy now when he walks out, you hear bow down to the king. I don't care who you are. You're sitting there and you're going, yes. And he's he's one of the people that I put alongside Chris Jericho. Where it's like, you reinvented a few times. You reinvented a few times to the point where you can now walk out, ha- come out in a suit, talk smack to a lot of people, mm-hmm. get slapped by Becky Lynch, yep. defend your wife, but also watch her get her butt kicked on almost a weekly basis because everyone loves seeing McMahon get their butt kicked. Get judo thrown by Ronda Rousey. Absolutely. Get put through a table by Ronda Rousey yeah. and still come out not looking like a bitch because mm-hmm. you got thrown like a bitch through yep. a table. But then come out and still look ring ready. I mean, unless you're facing the Brotherhood of Destruction at Crown Jewel when you when all four of you looked... Like you had no idea what you were doing. Oh, I'm really happy I didn't watch that page. No, it, there's one part where they're they're trying to Undertaker was supposed to throw Triple H into the side rail, and then he spun around and almost looked like they were doing a, a flamenco twist. Yeah, kind of dip I move. Saw a, I saw a little. Oh, if you watch Bacho Mania, it was all over it. Because it, it was no, all that over was when it. he tore. I think he tore his pec. He tore his shoulder. You, or something. you literally see the moment where he tries to whip Undertaker, and he's but just Undertaker not using the arm, and he's just like arms yeah. like kind of like this, and it it just at that moment as a fan, I was like, okay, you know what. I'd rather now have your mind controlling everything mm-hmm. because, let's face it, you're almost 50. Mm-hmm. You got three kids at home. One of them's a teenager. Like, oh, wow. One yeah. of them's like almost, one of them's 11 or 12. Like, you don't got time. You you got so much shit going on. We're just all waiting for Vince McMahon to keel over and pass out or die because oh, you're going to get the spot. Don't, don't say that about Vince. I'm sorry. I hold no punches here, sir. For I me, hold no punches. For me, it's, I will not let, you know... I, I, I don't know. I'm very bad with gauging time anywhere in between 2007 and 2014. But for the past... Let's let's even stretch it the past decade. I am willing to overlook the past decade of bad booking decisions. Just call it the PG era. We're all happy it's over. Sure. We're yeah, all happy I'm, it's over. I'm willing to overlook the PG era for the, the greater good that McMahon has done for the industry, depending on your viewpoint. Because I know some people get very mad and they're like, I wish the territory system was still around. I'm mad at him for destroying that. That would, I, I, I am one of those people who am not mad about the territory system. I actually like the fact that he unified everything. I like the fact that yeah. he, you know, I mean, you go about and you watch the McMahon story and you see, okay, you know what, he was, he was, but he was ruthless. As mm-hmm. much as character is on screen. Ruthless behind, businessman. Behind closed doors. This is a man, and you got to remember, this is, this is a guy who literally took wrestling to that forefront. Without him buying out those territories, all these fans that bitch and complain wouldn't have anything to bitch and complain about. That's what you can say. It's like, would we, without Vince McMahon, as some people say colonizing the wrestling industry, without Vince McMahon colonizing the wrestling industry, would we have gotten to Hulk Hogan? No. Like, especially in the, in the worldwide appeal of Hulk Hogan. Let me give you something stronger than that. Without Vince McMahon colonizing the wrestling business, would we have gotten a Mr. T at WrestleMania? Probably not. Would we have gotten an LT at WrestleMania. Would we have gotten a WrestleMania? No. See, these are things. Yeah. So I can appreciate your viewpoint mm-hmm. and say, yes, I have to respect McMahon for everything he's done for the business. Yeah. But as a person who literally has a voice and has a right to uh, speak out and have people tuning in every week to hear what's going to come out of my mouth, mm-hmm. 
I'm happy the PG era is over. I agree with I'm that. I'm happy yeah, that he looked at his daughter and he said, you know what? You CBO'd us right into the ground. Our mm. numbers are still there. We're getting, don't get me wrong, they're getting two and a half million hits on Raw. So the numbers are still there. Yeah. It's not 3.5 or 4.6 like when they were getting right around just when they peaked in an Attitude Era. Yes. But yeah. the numbers are, I mean, you're still getting 2.5 million people to and tune even in. even without that, it's still gross, uh, ridiculous the amount of profits they have. I think they had their highest highest uh, profiting year ever accorded for inflation. Yeah. Like, it's still... Oh, it's the, still the business is still there. And you yeah. know what the great thing is now is that the one thing I, I love about AEW is that now, even though they're not competition yet because there's no mm-hmm. TV deal in place, and that's what yeah. we still try to stress people. By the way, you can check out our AEW episode we dropped two weeks ago where we talked about all things AEW. Mm-hmm. But AEW without a TV deal means no competition right now. Exactly. we got to see the pay-per-view. we got to see how it works. we got to see how it flows. we got to see everything that got set up. Got to hope Cody is as good as his dad was. Because mm-hmm. his dad didn't have the pocketbook that Vince McMahon does, but now Cody does. Cody Rich. literally has a license to write a check because he's got one of the richest men in the world backing him. I find that wild. I find it... And I, I understand the WCW comparisons that a lot of people make. Of course, because it's a Rhodes. It's because it's a Rhodes. It, well, no, it's because there's money and they're being viewed as competition. It's because they're being backed by somebody who is ridiculously financially successful who has no experience in wrestling. But he got, but this time, much different than Ted Turner, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he got the right people in place. He didn't just find some wetback executive who was six months in the business and said, you're going to run it. Don't get me wrong, Bishop did one hell of a job. Yeah. We had great TV for about five solid years. Mm-hmm. Everyone was a wrestling fan for five solid years. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone yeah. was. Yeah. But you look back at it and you could see why McMahon was more successful. Because even though McMahon near the end, he realized, okay, now I got to take risks. I, I can't be safe anymore. Yeah, I've got to be. I've got to take risks. And get mankind as champion. Well, what, like once that. he did those risks, that's when things started to pay off. And I think that's a problem. A lot of people sleep on it, and I even sleep on it sometimes too. I look at the McMahon's now, and I'm thinking you're complacent because you haven't got any competition. But once May 25th happens, once mm-hmm. Double or Nothing happens, we're gonna really see what AEW is packing. And I know mm-hmm. for a fact, Vince McMahon, Triple H, Stephanie, Shane. They're all going to be sitting around a TV somewhere watching that pay-per-view and looking at what they're doing and thinking, okay, you know what? Do we have to worry or don't we have to worry? I do not believe Vince will watch it. Because, I do. because of the things I've heard, because you hear things come up where it's like Vince doesn't watch anything except for WWE, like Vince calls burritos steak wraps. Like I, I, If the rumors are true about his cultural bubble, I see no reason for him to watch it. Do I believe that someone like Triple H could watch it? Very much so. Triple H came out flat out and said, we're going to keep a close eye on things. Yeah, like Triple H goes to progress shows sometimes. Like, it would not surprise me if he and watched... that's why I can't wait for him to take the helm. Because I see a okay, guy yeah. who's much more involved in the Got entire the business. Yeah. Whereas yeah. instead of, you know, Vince, I get it. Vince is like, this is my multi-billion dollar company. I have to focus on this. Mm-hmm. I get it. But you know what? Don't sleep on everything that's around you because you look at all the good things Triple H is doing with NXT and the roster there. Yeah. And I get it. Small pond, a lot of big fish. Yes. Come up to the main roster, yeah. very big pond, small fish. So yeah. you have to you have to learn how to work it properly. But I look at the main roster, certain guys that they're still hanging on with that shouldn't be. I'm sorry. I, I'm a big advocate for the underdog. I love everybody. Mm-hmm. But Zack Ryder, got to go. Nia Jax, got to go. Tamina Snuka, got to go. These are roster spots that somebody else, younger and better and more qualified, can take up. Mm-hmm. I can go on and on all day about how much I absolutely can't stand Nia Jax, but I won't. But let's get back to you. <laughs> I was like, Reddit has you covered, buddy. <laughs> like, the amount of Nia Jax hate <laughs> online, whether you want to think it's justified or not, I personally, I, I cannot care enough when it comes to Nia Jax. Just, and, and I can Nia see Jax it. getting RKO to Royal Rumble, though, was uh, fantastically amazing. Ooh, buddy. The amount of people that were like yes, and the amount of person, the, the amount of person, the one person, the one, who that I know one of, Nia Jax fan. Oh no, not even a fan. The one person I know of specifically, and any of my buddies who I talk to about wrestling who listen to this podcast will know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> Very well, I want to know. He has somehow become public enemy number one in Ontario indie wrestling, the Facebook group right now. Jesus Christ, he was not happy because it was funny. He had been leading like. Probably about a two-week tirade of, you know, men should not be wrestling women. Men should not be interacting with women in a negative way in wrestling because you're teaching kids negative. And I'm like, this is, this is theater. 
This is the last remaining bastion of something that is basically Shakespearean theater. And this is the hill you're willing to die on? You're not willing to die on things that, you know, countless people would find distasteful, like Mae Young birthing a hand. But you are willing to die <laughs> you on, bring up me. <laughs> on, on, all right, on all this right. hill of women it was an adorable hand, men. though. It was an adorable hand, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it had the one little finger that was so cute. But, like, the... He was he, so adept against women wrestling men, against intergender wrestling of any kind. And then, like, two weeks later, he starts this tirade, which I believe he's still going on about. Nia Jax enters the Men's Royal Rumble. And unlike all her predecessors, unlike people like Beth Phoenix and people China. like that, took, like, legit finishers. Took three finishers and then got chucked. And it's like, I personally thought it was interesting. I thought it was entertaining as shit. Like, I love to see someone I hate get their just dues. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. And even though I, I know it was scripted, out, yeah. and I was marked I marked out there, when mm-hmm. I saw that, I stood up in my, in my living room and I was like, Randy Orton, these days it's like watching paint dry to watch you wrestle, but <laughs> you are now a god to me. For 25 minutes, you, sir, were my pick to win the Royal Rumble. Then yeah. you, shortly after that, you got chucked, but you putting Nia Jax's face to the mat... Mm-hmm. I can live up. You, in my opinion, retire right now, sir. You're Hall of Fame bound. <laughs> you are Hall of Fame bound just by that move. It was a big fan service spot, especially because they they took the criticism of what, whether you want to say it was valid or not. Once again, the criticism that fans had, especially like internet fans of Nia Jax being public enemy number one, you know, after breaking Becky. There's no other way to put it than she broke Becky Lynch's face. She got a lucky shot and she broke her nose. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It wasn't it, planned. It, was... it happened. But that goes to show the inexperience. Because if she was well trained in the ring, that wouldn't have happened. I I don't like... Tell me I'm wrong. I, I don't like commenting on stuff like that because I don't know her training. I don't know what... And I don't mean to say it in the rude sense of like, I don't know what WWE sees in her. Can I, don't I tell know you her training? They saw... Can I tell you her training? If you know it, Two words. Not enough. The Rock. Oh, okay. Because I Here's heard a lot why. of people just say, like, there's not Here's enough why. training. And, I, and I, we're going to go on this rant, and I promised Steve I would never talk about this rant again, but i got to do it one more time. <laughs> so, because she's related in bloodline of Samoan dynasty, yeah. she was grandfathered into NXT, she was rushed through the system because she's larger than life, she came out, had some very subpar NXT matches, couldn't cut a promo to save her life, then was brought up to the main roster... Then, they took this larger-than-life woman who they could have literally made the most badass. There's one way Nia Jax could have worked, much like Roman Reigns. Don't put a mic in her hand. Let her walk out there, let her kick some serious butt, and leave. No words. Just fists. Literally, the revival (laughs) slogan. Just fists. Just fists. But what do they do? They put a mic in her. Then they get somebody like Alexa Alexa Bliss to attack her about her weight, and about this, and about that. And then it became a, you know what... I'm I'm being I've been bullied my whole life because I'm a big girl. No, uh, uh-uh, uh, crash it, stop it right there. I'm a big guy. Mm-hmm. Even at the age of 35, I still get people who I'll walk by with my wife, who's a, a, incredibly yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, and they'll be like, "How did she get him?" One word: mouth. My mouth does a lot of my talking for me, and I also have a sexy radio voice. Plus, I have cute dimples and blue eyes. I thought you were going in a very different angle with the mouth comment. But no, but hey. no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's keep it clean. No, but honestly and truly, I have confidence when I talk. I can command a room. Yeah, and that's one of the things I appreciate, and that's one of the things I know my wife fell in love with me about. Plus, I'm hilarious. I'm funny as fuck. Humble brag. I am. I don't have to be humble. It's my show. But. <laughs> But the fact of the matter remains is that for weeks on end, for months on end, they did that. They berated us when she's being bullied. Then they go ahead and slap the title on her. And the first person she hugs, The Rock's mom. Oh, yeah. I'm tired of being reminded that you are The Rock's cousin. I'm tired of being reminded that you're Samoan Destiny. That's why The Rock, when he first entered, didn't work. Because they introduced him as Rocky Johnson's son. The the grandson of High Chief Peter Maivia. Now, it's like, okay, cool. Just like when Randy Orton first entered, a lot of people hated him because it was like, oh, it's Cowboy Bob Bob Orton's son. son. It's third generation wrestler, blah, 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 blah. Then he carved out his own legacy as Legend Killer. Then The Rock became Mm -hmm. The Rock. So these are the things that that's why those characters have defined and stayed the test of time. That's why The Rock can come back once every five years, say, do you smell what The Rock is cooking? And then leave. And fans are okay with letting him go for another five years. 
Yeah. But the problem with Nia Jax, the problem with all these guys is I'm sick and tired of hearing about your bloodline. Just because you're born in the same bloodline 